today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, welcome back to Framelines. My name is Shane Taylor. I uh, don't know why I did a little bow, like a little greeting. My name is Shane Taylor. I'm an Irish street photographer. I live in London and I shoot street photography around London with my buddy Josh Edgoose. Uh, in this episode, I want to talk about the Leica M10, which is a camera I've had for about six months. I want to give you my impressions on using this day in, day out, and my impressions on moving from camera systems like Fuji and Canon and Sony, and especially cameras like the Fujifilm X Pro 2 and X Pro 3, and moving from those to something like the M10, and what the value is in doing that. So I'll get into that in a few minutes, and I'll kick it off showing you some photos I've taken with this camera over the last six months in London and Ireland. So this is gonna be my impressions of the M10. So I'm gonna break it down into three or four points and talk about the most significant features of this camera and what makes it so appealing to shoot with. Number one, the viewfinder. Both myself and Josh have mentioned in previous videos how we prefer shooting with DSLRs and rangefinders because we just don't really like looking at screens. I find it a much more enjoyable experience to take photos looking through a viewfinder that's always bright, clear, doesn't have a refresh rate, doesn't have any contrast issues with existing ambient light. And I look at a screen all day long, so I'm either on my phone, laptop, or, or you know, watching TV or something. So if I get to go for a walk and I get to take photos, I really, really don't want to look at a tiny screen inside a camera viewfinder all the time. Now, I've said before that I really enjoy DSLR viewfinders for those reasons, specifically the Canon 6D, but the viewfinder in the M10 is by far the biggest, brightest, clearest viewfinder I've ever seen in a camera. And because it's a rangefinder style viewfinder, it doesn't force you to look through the lens of the camera. So you don't get that kind of corridor view that you do get with DSLRs. It's simply a slightly magnified view of the world. And that, in my opinion, is a really nice way to take photographs because there's hardly any distinction between looking at the world and then lifting the M10 to your eye and viewing the world through that. You're not looking through the lens of the DSLR, which typically defaults to the fastest aperture and shows you a very shallow depth of field by default. Everything's in focus, everything's bright, everything's clear. And the M10 is the best example I've ever used of a viewfinder in a rangefinder camera. Number two, the focusing experience. Now, a similar viewfinder you could argue is available on cameras like the X100 and the X-Pro series. It's not nearly as big, it's not as bright, but they do have rangefinder style optical viewfinders. But what they don't have is a rangefinder focusing mechanism. M-series cameras like the M10 are the only digital cameras to have them, and I'd like to have perfected it with the M10. I've used a lot of different rangefinder cameras like the Canon P, the Hexar or F, some baser rangefinders. I've used the Leica M2 and M6, which have great rangefinder patches, very clear, but none of them are as easy to focus as the M10 because it's just a super clear rangefinder patch at all times. Since I got this camera, I've never had any issues seeing the rangefinder patch clearly. I can shoot in bright sunlight or at night and it's still bright and clear, very easy to focus with. With every other rangefinder, including the much loved M6, there have been times where I've missed focus because I just couldn't see the patch clearly, like there was some kind of glare or something that prevented me from instantly seeing the focus. That's never happened with the M10. Now, comparing it to something like the X-Pro series or X100 series, what's so special about focusing with a rangefinder patch? Well, this is only my opinion, but I find it gives you a degree of confidence and intention that directly influences the kind of photos you take. With the X-Pro or any autofocusing system, depending on the lens, you're never really 100% certain that it's going to achieve focus on what you want it to achieve focus on. Say, 
For example, if you're shooting through a bus window or any window or some railings, there's a chance the camera will autofocus on a window pane. It might catch focus on the railings instead of the subject. It might catch focus on someone's shoulder or cheek or ear. But with the M10, if you focus on an eye, it's gonna get that eye in focus, regardless of what that eye is behind. With the M10 focusing system, it means that you pick the exact subject that you want to focus on. And within a fraction of a second, you should have achieved focus. If you mess up, it's because you messed up and not the camera's autofocusing system messed up. I prefer that way of focusing because it feels like I'm learning. It feels like I'm developing a skill and it feels like I'm shooting with intention. So before we go any further, I just want to quickly mention our sponsor, Squarespace. My background is in e-commerce design. Before I came to photography, I designed websites for a living. And Squarespace has always been the first platform I recommend to clients, especially photographers and creatives. The reason I always recommend them is because Squarespace have portfolios and galleries integrated into their platform, which makes it easy to manage and curate a portfolio of work and present it in a way that does the work justice, looks professional and encourages clients to want to work with you. They also make it very easy to sell products like books, zines, prints, or even digital products like presets. So if you're a photographer and you need a website, I highly recommend going to squarespace.com and signing up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, visit squarespace.com framelines to get 10% off. Number three, Leica's opinionated design approach. This camera feels really nice to carry around, like really, really nice. It feels just heavy enough that there's a sense of weight in your hands to stabilize it. And it's light enough to carry around all day without really noticing the weight, depending on the lens you're carrying. Here's where I think Leica are light years ahead of every other camera manufacturer. They have a very strongly opinionated design approach. They don't buckle to trends. They don't include a multitude of function buttons and dials catering for every possible owner. With the M series, they've stuck to a proven body design and they only ever make minor changes to that design itself. It's kind of incredible when you look at the Leica M2, which was released in 1957, and you compare it to the M10. It feels like the same camera ever so slightly evolved. It's a design classic in terms of form and function. Number four, the combination of sensor and lens. This one is difficult to talk about because I don't really know enough technical information about the sensor in the M10 to break down the Leica look. But what I can tell you is that editing DNG files from the M10 is a dream. Pulling back shadow detail is very easy. High ISO is super clean. There's no color shifts. The color from it looks incredible by default, depending on the lens. But using an APO lens in combination with the sensor delivers a very pure color palette with a large degree of subtlety in tonal range. And it's just, it gives you a very pleasing look almost immediately. The lens selection then is huge. Um, for a 50 mil alone, there are at least eight Leica options to choose from, not to mention third-party lenses from Zeiss and Voigtlander. Each of these lenses have different characteristics and because the mount has been around for such a long time, you can literally use the same model lens that Henri Cartier-Bresson used on his M3 without any adapters. It's that sense of heritage that comes across in the M10 and it's wholly unique to this line of digital cameras. So this all sounds like, you know, glowing praise for the M10, but there are of course some issues with it. It's not a perfect camera. And in my experience, these are two issues which annoyed me a little bit and continue to annoy me. Con number one, the light meter is a bit weird. The light meter takes some getting used to, to say the least. Everyone I know that shoots with this camera, that shoots with the M10, underexposes it by up to one stop because it's very easy to overexpose on this sensor, especially shooting in very contrasty light, like at night, for example. But because it's so easy to pull back detail from the shadows on this sensor, even if you do underexpose by one stop, you don't really lose that much dynamic range. But then again, you shouldn't really have to underexpose any camera these days. Now, this is also down to just how it meters and it doesn't have a multimeter. It uses a spot meter as far as I'm aware. So you really need to lock the meter on the brightest part of the scene for it to be exposed properly. But sometimes it's easy to forget that, especially if you're out shooting at night or if you're shooting street photography and you're doing it very quickly. You can also avoid this issue entirely by shooting fully manually, which I do quite often. So it's not a huge issue, but it is there. And I think it's largely resolved in the M11, which is a camera we're gonna take a look at shortly. 
but for now, yeah, the M10, the light meter, just watch out for it. Con number two, the 75 mil, 50 mil frame line grouping. I don't like it. Uh, I don't know why they group 50 and 75 together. 50 is such a common focal length. So for Leica to group them both together, it means that if you need to shoot 50 mil, you're looking at two sets of frame lines in the one viewfinder and it's a bit cluttered. It's something you do adjust to eventually, but yeah, I just wish there was an option to turn off 75 completely or maybe some kind of like minor upgrade or addition where you could have it modified to turn off 75 mil without needing to disassemble the camera and it, without it costing such a high price. So as you can probably tell, I really enjoy taking photographs with this camera. It's my favorite camera to use right now. I know I can get certain types of photographs very easily with other cameras, like shooting 85mm f1.2, for example, on autofocus cameras. I know I can get shots like that on other cameras, and maybe it's a bit more difficult to get them on this, but that kind of photography doesn't really interest me right now. I want to keep shooting with this because I enjoy the act of photography so much more with this camera than any other one right now. And I feel like I'm developing a skill. I feel like I'm seeing maybe a bit differently. And I don't get as much time to shoot as I'd like anymore. You know, with YouTube and the magazine we're producing, my day job and a dozen other things. So when I'm out there taking street photos, I really want to make the most of it. And that's why for me personally, the M10 is such a great camera. So those are my thoughts on the Leica M10. Hope that was useful. If you like the video, like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out our Framelines magazine, which we are working on issue two of right now. Like we're actually going to test print with issue two, and we've included almost three times as many photographers this time. We've made small improvements to paper types, and uh, yeah, we think it's a much better issue, uh, a much more improved than issue one, which, you know, we were super happy with issue one. So that's available if you check it out in the description down below. And yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching.